A South Korean intelligence report says that North Korea has shipped about 20,000 containers to Russia via the northeastern port city of Rajan. When fully loaded, they can hold about 9.4 million 152mm shells. It is noted that while North Korea's shipment of 152mm artillery shells and missiles to Russia has not had a significant impact on its stockpiles, the additional shipments could hamper military preparations due to a shortage of ammunition. North Korea's weapons stockpiles could last for three months of war. Pyongyang is also operating approximately 200 munitions factories at maximum capacity and has secured enough military supplies for a three-month war with South Korea despite the increased exports, Seoul's defense intelligence agency said. We assess that North Korea has exported more than 20,000 containers to Russia through Rajan port, according to a document that the Seoul's defense intelligence agency submitted to People Power Party representative Kong Day 6 office and seen by NK News. The new figure marks an increase of some 7,000 containers from when DAA last estimated the extent of DPRK Russia arms trade in August, with the agency calculating that they could have carried approximately 9.4 million rounds of ammunition. Similar to August's assessment, the Seoul's Defense Intelligence Agency said North Korea may be providing 122mm multiple rocket launcher shells, T-series tank shells, portable anti-aircraft missiles and anti-tank missiles compatible with Russian systems, stating that the US and the ROK are jointly tracking North Korean weapons use on the battlefield. The updated estimate comes days after South Korea revealed evidence of North Korea deploying troops to assist Russia in the war in Ukraine. Shin sung Ki, a senior analyst at the Korea Institute for Defense Analyses told NK News that the DIA assessment seems accurate given how North Korea has focused on building factories that produce shells and missiles that Moscow needs in recent months. Veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war Yevgeny Diki said that in a year of offensives in Donbass, Russia advanced 38 kilometers and lost a number of troops that corresponds to the armies of several European countries. The Russian offensive in Donbass has been going on for a little over a year. The offensive that is still going on began on October the 10th last year. It will soon be a year and two weeks. In this year and less than two weeks, the Russians have advanced a whopping 38 kilometers. And in these 38 kilometers, they have lost approximately the number of several European armies combined, Dicky said on Radio NV. The Ukrainian veteran noted that the estimate of Russian medical losses at 100,000 is not overstated and given the survival rate of the Russian wounded, the number of killed occupiers can be estimated at 200,000. Then you can look for something in history to compare these figures with. The 10 years of the USSR's war in Afghanistan cost 15,000 killed. The last time losses of this scale were in World War II. So in two years, more than 10 year Afghanistan's, the intensity of losses is thus 100 times greater than it was in Afghanistan. The last time losses of this scale were observed in Europe was in World War II. If not in Europe, then in the world, perhaps in the Korean War, and perhaps in some of the African wars, but this is a separate story, because there was little use of equipment and millions of people were simply driven wall to wall. And in European history for 80 years, there has been nothing like this. Dickey emphasized, according to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, as of the morning of October the 22nd, Russia has lost 681,580 soldiers. In July, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, stated that Russia's losses on the front were three times higher than Ukraine's and in some areas even more. On September the 24th, the Russian publication Media Zona reported that the names of at least 71,000 Russian soldiers killed in Ukraine had been established. On October the 7th, the UK Ministry of Defense Intelligence Service reported a new record for average daily losses of Russian occupation forces in Ukraine. In September, the figure was 1,271 people. On October the 14th, the Wall Street Journal reported that according to American analysts, in September 2024, Russian troops experienced the deadliest month of the war against Ukraine. According to Western intelligence estimates, Russia's losses amounted to 1,200 killed and wounded per day. Kremlin propaganda is preparing Russians for a long war, 
State Duma deputy and ardent supporter of the so-called SVO, Alexei Zoravlev, admitted that the Russian army is too weak. He made the corresponding statement on air on the state television channel, Russia won. Zoravlev stated that the Russian armed forces are not capable of advancing quickly in Ukraine, despite the fact that they have an advantage over the Ukrainian armed forces in both manpower and weapons. He also said that the occupation of Donbass alone will take years. Despite the obvious superiority of our armed forces, we are not advancing as quickly as we would like. If we take the same pace, the liberation of Donbass is a matter of not months but years, several years. The Russian deputy said, It is noteworthy that in the first days of the war, the same Russian propaganda claimed that the Russian armed forces would reach the borders of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions in a matter of days. Today, after two and a half years of large-scale military actions, this goal has not been achieved. Moreover, the Russian Federation has lost control over part of its Kursk region. Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that his primary goal in Ukraine was to secure the eastern Donbass region. Since the start of its offensive in February 2022, when it failed to capture the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, Russia has adapted its aims, concentrating instead on trying to conquer eastern Ukraine. While Ukraine's surprise push into Russia's Kursk region last month caught Russian forces off guard, Putin stressed that the move had failed to slow Moscow's advance in occupied Ukraine. This year, Russia gained a similar area in Ukraine, mostly in the Donbass region, after losing tens of thousands of servicemen who were sent to fortified Ukrainian positions. Russian forces are just kilometers away from the town of Pokrovsk, which sits on a strategic highway and serves as a key military hub. The Ukrainians, however, are maneuvering in areas to the north to possibly keep the Russians away from the fortifications they're building or to occupy strategic heights.